and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today guys as we are going to be discussing Barca's transfer plans and especially how they may have changed after the huge huge news that we all received on Thursday because Barca have been given the approval to activate the all important economic levers which will generate the club over 700 million euros and we are going to be discussing today what we can expect this summer in terms of incomings in terms of outgoings as well in what's a crucial summer for rebuilding this club will we still have to sell Franky de Jong will he stay at Barca after this news there is a lot to discuss and so much to get through so get comfortable and let's do this. Because honestly, guys, after the news on Thursday about the economic levers, I think the feeling among the fan base, it's been incredible. And I think especially the way that extraordinary assembly took place with Laporta leading it, of course, and explaining everything in detail to us all. And I think the feeling after all of that now, it kind of feels to me like the way it did when Laporta was elected. And it almost feels like right now, this is a new beginning, a new, new beginning. Because obviously last summer, when Laporta came in, inheriting the club in the state that it was in, it was all about finding a way through that period. It was about survival mode, finishing in the Champions League, making sure that we didn't incur any more losses. And it was about rescuing the club. But I think now, given these decisions that have been made, the changes that we've been able to make in just a year, the board have still done this much, much quicker than I think many of us were expecting. Here we are, ready now to start again, to properly rebuild this club. And I think from this day forward, we can't look back. There's nothing holding us back. And now the serious work begins. The big decisions start right here. And the rebuild, it's underway. And I think speaking there about rebuilding, guys, one of the most essential parts of any rebuild, in my opinion, at Barcelona is all about getting rid of that deadwood. And you all know who I'm talking about. Players there who are earning very big money, extraordinary money, and contributing very little and often nothing at all. And for many, many years now, we've been stuck with these players. We've had no opportunity, no chance to shift them from our squad. Because when we're in our financial mess, if these kind of players refuse to leave, which they have done, only with the desire of sitting around on the sidelines collecting their huge paychecks week after week, which they have done, there wasn't a lot that we could do. We almost felt powerless to these players who basically seem to hold all the power. But... Could that change now? Because multiple sources already now, after the activation of those all-important levers, it's being said in the media that Barca, they will not rule out the possibility of contract terminations this summer. For those players who have been clearly told, you're not in the coach's plans, you are not going to play here, but they still refuse to leave the club, they could have their contract terminated. And I think that's absolutely huge because it's not necessarily about here. This summer, we're going to spend all of our money terminating contracts. Obviously, that's not what we want to do or maybe even what we will do. But it's just about the fact to me that we could. We have the option to do it now. We have money available to us and these players know we could do it. The threat is there. And I think that's all we needed. Just to make it so that if they continue to make things awkward, if they refuse to play ball, quite literally, for the first time now since Laporta arrived back at the club, we have the possibilities to take action. We have the resources now to properly clean up this squad. And those players, they know that now. Consider this. A warning. But of course, guys, aside from moving players on, there is also the all-important topic of bringing players in and reinforcing and strengthening this squad, which, again, we have needed now significant change for quite some time. And of course, Robert Lewandowski, he is one of the biggest names, one of the biggest players that could come in this summer and genuinely change this team and change the dynamic of our entire attack. Because obviously, Barca haven't received any response at all for that 32 million initial 
initial offer for Lewandowski. We all know that. And we did say recently that very, very soon we are going to be making a second offer for Robert Lewandowski. That should happen now really, really soon. That will be upwards of 40 million euros. And Lewandowski remains more determined than ever to make the move to Barca. But I think what's also important right now, keeping an eye on the news, is that Bayern have now agreed a deal to sign Sadio Mane from Liverpool. The fee there reported to be around 32 million up front, potentially a further 9 million in add-ons as well. And I think that is a pretty good deal there for Bayern, it has to be said. And I feel like that is significant in the Robert Lewandowski situation because there's always been that feeling that once Bayern get that deal done, once they bring in Mane, then they will finally enter negotiations. Then they will be more open to letting Lewandowski leave. So that's a really key deal there. And Barca should be lodging that second bid very, very soon indeed. In terms of other forward acquisitions, I should say that Barca haven't completely given up on the signing of Rafinha. I think right now, Leeds' valuation of the player, it's huge. It is absolutely massive and way, way above what not only we couldn't pay, but we're just not willing to. Because I think the key right now is just because we have the money it doesn't mean here as a club we're just going to be going and paying every single asking price for all of these players just going out and spending it all at once that's not what we should do because Bartomeu has made all of those mistakes in the past what we have to do right now is remain very calm very calculated in the transfer market and I have to say I completely and utterly 100% trust Mattia Almani to do exactly that he is a very shrewd operator we know in the transfer market and Barca for me only only going to make that move for Rafinha if Leeds do reduce that asking price and quite significantly too and I think it's all going to depend on how keen Rafinha is to leave he really does make a fuss so he makes it very very clear that he wants out from the club then things may start happening but for now there is no new breakthrough on this deal if we do though drop back to defense and this is where it gets to me very very interesting because Gerard Romero today has actually come out and said that Chaffee next season he's thinking very much about using three defenders, changing the system there, whether that would be in all of the games or just some of them, but three at the back is something that is a very real possibility, and I wouldn't actually be too surprised by that. We did see him use a very similar sort of system at Al Sadd. You also look at the signings that we've already made this summer, Andreas Christensen, Franck Kessier, those are players who can operate in that different kind of system, and especially when you look as well at the defensive players that we're being linked with, it all does fit. Because there is, of course, the option of Jules Kunde, Xavi's dream defensive acquisition. And it is said that Xavi this summer is absolutely desperate to add pace in the centre-back positions. He wants to add more speed and the ability to recover in that area. And certainly there, Jules Kunde fits the bill perfectly on that. Barca, as we know, are not alone in their interest in Kunde. Chelsea actually had a head start in this deal. They were the ones who were very much advanced in negotiations. But right now, both Chelsea Chelsea and Barca hold that agreement with Kunde, but so far neither of the clubs have agreed a deal with Sevilla. It's a rumoured fee right now of 55 to 60 million euros money that Barcelona could pay, and the potential there as well for one player to be added into that deal. And what I would expect to see now, especially with these levers being activated, is a real concrete move being made from Barca towards Sevilla for Kunde soon. So keep an eye on that one for sure. In the fullback areas, Marcos Alonso does indeed remain on Barca's radar and i got to be completely honest on this one. I don't really like the idea of this signing and there is still work to be done in agreeing a fee with Chelsea. Barca have no intention of paying very much for Alonso. Honestly, really they shouldn't be doing that at all but I do have to stress here that should Alonso be signed, he would strictly be a backup to Jordi Alba. I see a lot of people thinking there that Alonso is going to come in and be a starter. That's going to be our starting left back next season it wouldn't be like that at all this is someone here who could come in and provide competition allow Alba to rest a bit more often which is definitely needed and I would also say that Alonso is more comfortable playing as a wing back you know if we do go with that three at the back system he is somebody again who would fit that kind of model but let's wait and see here if this one does happen because there is a chance that it still might not before another Chelsea player is on the radar because this one I could 
can understand certainly a bit more Cesar Aspilicueta. He's somebody who can play in two different areas there, not only at centre-back, but also as a right-back. He's also very, very comfortable operating in a three-at-the-back system. And I think what Aspilicueta would bring there is experience. And not only that, but more importantly, leadership. Because I do think we lack a lot of leadership in our back line. That is something that we certainly have to improve. And Laporta has even alluded to that. But it does remain to be seen whether Chelsea will allow Aspilicueta to walk away for free this summer. That is what Barca would like to happen and snap him up on that free transfer because this summer is the end of his current deal. But... Chelsea could trigger a one-year extension. We'll have to wait and see what Aspilicueta agrees with the club and whether this deal is going to be possible. But if we do now move into midfield, and this is when it gets very, very interesting when we're talking about Frank de Jong, because obviously after that decision yesterday, activating the economic levers, many people are asking, well, what's going to happen now with Frank de Jong? Does this mean that Barca don't need to sell him this summer? And the answer to that is absolutely right. Barca, for me now, do not need to sell Frankie de Jong. From an economic standpoint, we do not need to sell any player this summer from a financial point of view. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he's guaranteed to stay at the club. Because personally for me right now, I still get that feeling that Barca are still open to Frank de Jong's exit at the right price. I've got to make that very clear here. It would take a very, very big offer for us to part with him. But if that offer was to arrive, I still don't think that we would say no. What is clear at this stage, though, is that we're not going to give him away. Man United seemed to be under the illusion that we were desperate and we were going to give him away for 60 million euros. I mean, that was laughable. That was an absolute joke. And that was never going to happen. And especially now, since we are not desperate for the money, which means a Effectively, that if we were to sell De Jong this summer, if we were to accept that big, big offer, I personally believe it wouldn't be from an economic standpoint, it would then be a sporting decision to sell Frank De Jong. And the only reason that we would do that is to go out then and buy Bernardo Silva. That appears to be the plan still from the club, that if a big offer comes in and if Frankie can be sold for a huge amount, we would then turn our attention and really target the signing of Bernardo Silva. Xavi is very, very clear when he says that if Frankie is to leave, Silva must arrive. There is absolutely no question about that. But it remains to be seen whether that can happen. Although I would still say that if Frankie did end up staying, and it is a possibility, there is a real chance, of course, that that can happen, I think we would still need, even with these levers, to look into his contract. Because we all remember there the classic Bartomeu clause whereby this contract keeps increasing and increasing as the years go on, and Barca still aren't really comfortable with that happening. So I think if Frankie was to stay, he's already one of our highest earners there, over 300 100,000 euros a week. It said that he would be open to renegotiating, that he would be happy to help the club. So it shouldn't really be too much of a problem. But let's wait and see if we get to that stage. And so indeed, guys, that there is the complete transfer breakdown right now. And what we can expect at this stage from Barca. I think it's really, really positive here that we appear to have freedom again. La Liga, like I said yesterday, off our back in terms of registering players and new signings at the club. That will be absolutely instrumental in our plans. And that's why today, it may be a bit of a longer video than usual. It certainly is. But look, we had to discuss it all. We had to go through it step by step as to what we can expect this summer. And I really do believe it's going to be an exciting time for us all. There should be real optimism. Of course, there's things here that people will agree with of course there's things that I myself also do not but look we got to stay positive we have to keep hopeful here and make the moves that will help us improve as a club please do let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below going through each and every one of these deals what do you make of it and what would be your ideal summer your absolute perfect dream summer let me know that in the comments down below and of course I will See you very soon indeed. Whenever there is news, whenever there is updates, we will be here together. Thanks for watching, guys. And for your incredible support, absolutely amazing energy right now. I will see you soon. But until next time, as always, Vizca El Basha.